right. Uh, so I'm here with Mark Bolter, and we're um, in a, uh, a building at Microsoft that I haven't been to before, and looking at a product that I've never seen before. Uh, tell me a little bit about what we're looking at here. We're looking at Microsoft's first Surface computer. We're excited that we're going to make uh, an announcement for this product on May 30th at the Wall Street Journal's D conference. Uh, what we're going to be doing is announcing that this product will be available later this year in commercial partners that we have lined up. Uh, specifically, we'll be going into uh, hotels and retailers and uh, entertainment venues such as uh, casino resorts. Excellent. And um, how did this start? Well, about four years ago, a team here in hardware was given the uh, challenge to come up with a computer that was uh, more approachable, uh, convenient, and collaborative. And that, uh, that team uh, grouped together with the folks in MSR, and they uh, came up with a concept that is largely what you see today. And uh, what all can you do with this? Well, you can do many things. Uh, let me show you an application that uh, will give you the basics of what surface computing is all about. This is called Paint. And what you can see is that I can use my hands, as I would in the real world, to directly uh, manipulate and interact with the surface computer. I don't have to use a mouse or a keyboard. So I can just dip my hands in some paint, and I can touch the surface, and that point is recognized and an image is transmitted up to this diffuser by a projector that's in the system. Mm -hmm. That is an example of direct manipulation. What I can do also is, instead of just having one single point of contact like you might find on a kiosk, I can have two. So there's the second attribute of what a surface computer is comprised of, and that specifically is multi-touch. Yeah. Now, it's not only that you can touch in, in uh, one or two places, we can actually have massive multi-touch where I can use all of my fingers, which just allows you to have some fun and, and uh, draw some very interesting things. Now, so beyond uh, direct manipulation and, uh, and uh, multi-touch, we also have uh, an attribute called multi-user that, that you and I can collaboratively join around this table and we can work together. So go ahead and jump okay. in here. You can drag your fingers across the surface. And if there were other people here, we could have up to four or five people doing it at exactly the same time. So Excellent. it becomes a very collaborative sharing experience that uh, is very different than some of the isolated experiences you might have, say, around a small screen on a camera mm -hmm. or a uh, telephone or a, or a PC. Yeah. So additionally, uh, there's a fourth attribute of surface computing, which is called object recognition. So here's a paintbrush uh, right off the shelf from a hardware store. You can bring it to the surface and paint with it just as you would in the real world. So go ahead and give okay. it a try. We can dip the brush in another color paint. And you can see that the image uh, is transmitted onto the surface. And you can see that it detects different widths of, of the brush as well. Mm -hmm. So again, the way this works is that we have a vision system inside that is uh, sensing changes in infrared light on the surface of this diffuser. Mm -hmm. We can have some fun with some additional objects that are tagged, much like tags uh, you would see on dominoes or in uh, barcodes. And when this barcode is placed on the surface of the unit, it brings up a specific image that's tied to this specific tag. So does the table recognize the dot pattern on that, or is it used like an RFID tag? It recognizes the dot pattern via the cameras that are inside and then the projector sending the image up to the diffuser. Cool. So you can see that we can put on several different images and they can overlap one another and you can have some fun. So this, is again, is a very rudimentary example of what a surface computer can do, but you can imagine having these tags and this functionality in a lot of different uh, settings. We're first going to be taking uh, surface computing to the commercial environment, to, as I said, to uh, hotels and retailers and public entertainment yeah, venues. I, I've seen um, you know different videos going around the Internet of different multi-touch uh, applications and they seem real far off into the future, but this is something we're going to have out this year, right? Yes, in fact, that's true. Let me show you one of uh, the applications from our partners. Say, for instance, if you were to walk into a cell phone store, say, for instance, T-Mobile, and one of the opportunities that uh, the cell phone industry had it has is the, the need to communicate the rich, robust nature of some of the phones that are available today. This yeah. is an MDA, and it, it contains... Uh, a lot of features that are, are very robust. Imagine uh, having to, first of all, rely on a small 3x5 card. It's kind of difficult to really understand what, what uh, 
what is inside of this product, but what if you were able to pull the phone off the wall, place it down onto the surface, and instantly the surface recognizes it and brings up an image of, of uh, all of the different features of the phone. So you could actually tap on uh, the megapixel camera and you could be exposed to information that is as rich and robust as you might find on the so internet. So you can explore the features of a physical object just by laying it on the table. That's correct. What we're doing is we're, we're blending the physical and virtual worlds uh, together into one vibrant experience on a tabletop. Mm -hmm. Again, you can press on my face, so T-Mobile might have uh, some specific promotion that they want to tell consumers about at a given time. Additionally, what you can do is if you're considering making uh, a purchase of another device, say uh, Sidekick, you can actually compare those two devices side by side to look at the features on a comparative basis. And when you're ready to make a decision, you can leave the phone on the surface that you're intending to purchase. At that point, you'd want to take a look at what plans are available as you would in any normal discussion with, with a uh, customer sales person in a, in a store. And what you can do is you can bring up a variety of plans that are available and you can browse through them and if you find some that are interesting to you, you can drag them up onto the virtual workspace which is a nice surface that you can use to move the uh, objects around that allows you to really explore what you're interested in purchasing. Once you've made your decision, you can simply grab one of the cards and drag it into the phone and it's there building an invoice for you on the spot. Excellent. We can also take a look at services. Say if you're interested in, in texting, you can take a look at different plans that are available. Once you find one that you want to select, drag it into the phone. And then you can also check uh, coverage, for instance, in certain areas. You can take a look at the dark green areas are where the best coverage is located. You can also take a look at content. Say, if, say for instance, if you wanted to uh, pull some ringstones up onto the surface, you can display them, and then if you found one that you might be interested in listening to, you could play it. And if that sounds like you, you could drag it into the phone, and again, it's added to the invoice. At Excellent. that point, when you're ready to go, what you can do is simply press confirm, and your order is sent to uh, the staging area where the phone is provisioned, just like it is today. And at that point, uh, what we can do is recognize you as an individual, and when you bring your phone back into the store, you can place it down onto the surface, and it will recognize you, and you can at that point determine how you want to change your current plans. And for instance, if you again wanted to bring some ringtones up to the surface, you might be able to uh, associate them with specific individuals that are in your calling queue. And we have the capability to do that today on a lot of phones, but the UI is sometimes yeah. difficult and challenging. This yeah. makes it easy for the, for the user. Excellent. So another application would be uh, dining. Uh,